On the bench at the shooting range here, I have three Krag Jorgensens. Krags were adopted as the main infantry rifles in three countries during the last part of the 19th century. First in Denmark, then the United States, and finally in Norway. A Krag is easy to spot due to the half-capsule magazine with a side-loading door. The first Krag to be introduced was adopted by Denmark in 1889. This is the Model 89 long rifle. It has a straight bolt handle, a forward opening loading gate, and a barrel jacket. The US first adopted the Krag as the Model 1892, which started production in 1894. Small incremental changes took place over its short service life, resulting in the 1896 model, which is what this rifle is here, and the much more common Model 1898. US Krags have a bolt handle that is straight, but is angled downwards, a loading gate that opens downwards, and a traditional half handguard. Though the inventors Ole Krag and Erik Jorgensen were Norwegian, their home country was the last to adopt the Krag rifle, doing so in 1894. The Model 1894 long rifle is very similar in appearance to the US Krags. This rifle here is a Model 1912 carbine, which is stocked all the way to the muzzle. All three countries use different ammunition. The Danish Krag is chambered in 8x50R, the largest of the three by bullet diameter and powder capacity. The US Krag is chambered in 3040, or 30 Army as it was known at the time. The Norwegian Krag is chambered in 6.5x55, a joint development with Sweden for their Mauser rifles. This is the only of the three that is rimless. Let's get into shooting. First up is the Danish. The loading gate, or you can see it referred to as the door, opens forward. There is a trick to loading in the rounds. I had much more luck putting them in bullet first and then pushing the case in. As the gate is closed you can see the first round appears on the left side of the receiver, but for the bolt to pick it up, the magazine cutoff must be in the up position. Here's a closer look at the loading. The sights on the Danish are rather tall, making it very easy to get a good sight picture with. I'm not going to discuss recoil at all in this video since all three of the rifles are quite old and I'm shooting reloads in each of them. None of them are loaded very hot and the recoil is all manageable. The straight bolt handle gives good leverage to open and close the action. Crags in general are known for their smooth actions, and this one is no exception. However, it's not quite as smooth as the others. The Danish has a spring-loaded ejector, which is always pushing up on the bolt body. The other two have free-floating rocker ejectors, which contribute to them feeling just a bit smoother. Going in order, next up is the US Krag. The gate opening downwards makes it a bit easier to just drop cartridges in. It's less sensitive to how you place the cartridges in, whether that's nose first or base first. You do need to be aware of rim lock though, the rim on the second cartridge being behind that of the first cartridge, preventing it from being fed into the action. The magazine cutoff again needs to be in the up position to feed. This observation might only be applicable to the 1896 models like this one, but US Krags use five different rear sights during their service life. The 1896 sight slider is held in place by a thumb screw, and it likes to come loose and move around during recoil. I had to check mine a few times during shooting to make sure it was in the same place. The sight picture itself could be a bit better. 
Again, with these sights in particular, the notch is decent sized, however it's on the forward part of the sight, not the rear like most others, so it's just a little further away from your eye. The bolt handle I feel like I don't get as much leverage as I do on the Danish, but its position directly above the trigger finger is convenient, and you can quickly open, close, and shoot if you need to do so. And finally the Norwegian. The cartridges, being rimless, can be casually thrown into the gate without worrying about their position. Here I'm just checking that the bolt will pick up the round, and that the cutoff lever is in the correct position, which is down for these, unlike the others. The rear sight, being just ahead of the action, gives a good sight picture, though the notch is very small. There's a noticeable snag point with the bolt, but it's only when feeding the last round. And here it is again. It's not on the other rifles, and I'm not sure if it's only with mine in particular, but it is there. Working the bolt is very similar to that on the US Krag, with the bolt handle being directly above the trigger. This carbine has a flat bolt knob with checkering. I think I prefer the round knob, but that's up to the individual shooter. Now that we've discussed all three crags, I'm going to show some target footage. I've been shooting at this 10 inch steel gong here, which is set around 110 yards. A confession is that none of these rifles are sighted dead on. Like most military rifles, they shoot high at 100 yards. The Norwegian has a 100 yard setting on its sight, but it's very windy with 30 to 40 mile an hour gusts that I think is affecting its lighter bullets in particular. The Danish is shooting dead on, although I was aiming a foot or two low. The heavy 200 grain bullets did a number on my target, knocking it off of one of the hooks. It took a bit, but I got the US crack dialed in, or more like I figured out where to aim to get the bullet to hit the steel. There's just something about crags in general that I love. They're very well-made rifles, no matter the country of origin. They come from a time where mass production still had that artisan flair to it. The magazine is just the right amount of weird, and with them being the only rifle to use a half-capsule magazine, you know immediately when you see it that it's a crag. The rest of the design is underappreciated in my opinion. The bolt handle directly above the trigger allows for a very pleasant and quick shooting experience. The long extractor predates the Mauser, with the Danish Krag introduced in 1889, and the Mauser long extractor introduced with the 1893 model. The Krag did borrow its curved camming surfaces from the Mauser, assisting in primary extraction when the bolt is open. And then there's the thing that everyone comments on when they see a crag, 
and that is the smooth action. And it's true, it is very smooth. But usually the combat is accompanied by, but there's only one locking lug. And that is true, at least on the US models. But the Danish and Norwegian actually have three locking surfaces. The main lug up front, and the guide rib and the bolt handle all make contact with the receiver. The Danish action has a little bit more resistance due to the spring-loaded extractor pushing up on the bolt throughout its travel, but the Norwegian is every bit as smooth as the US. If you have a crack that you like to shoot, leave me a comment down below. Thanks for watching, I'm going to roll footage, enjoy.
It's got to be the screen. Thank <laughs> you. 